Okay, okay, it's been a busy uh, couple weeks. I had company from out of town. Uh, I had to wait for parts. But here's where we are. The S Bens are here. We're mocking them up right now. Um, probably putting the O2 sensor right in here somewhere. Uh, I don't even know where she's sitting right now. But yeah, she's probably going to be right in here. There's plenty of room for her to be nice and safe. Um, getting ready to cut these down. And then we're either going to slip them or band clamp them. You know, whatever one I have to do. Because I, I've got new hangers. Well, that one's not even there. But I've got new hangers and the seat's out. So I will get those in there. But until then, we're just trying to mock things up into the position it needs to be. Because once we have everything there, then we can figure out where we're going to place this with the cutouts. So remember, we're going to take the cutouts and try to place them in this cavity back here. So they'll come off of the existing exhaust, probably right in here-ish, like that. And then the turnouts will be right under this lower point. So that should get the desired effect. It's going to protect those motors a whole lot better than they were before. And the only compromise that I've got that I'm not happy about is the same compromise he had before. You can see they even tried rubbing or putting hose over it and everything, but there's nothing you can do. These cars weren't meant for a three inch exhaust. So without changing to an aftermarket uh, e-brake system that brings the cables up one side, which is something I'll tell him is an option that he could explore. It's not fun but i mean it's not super expensive it's just not very fun to do because the whole axle comes apart and everything comes to pieces but uh outside of that this is what people have been living with on e-brakes on these gm vehicles forever um so yeah that's the only thing i'm not happy with you can see i did i did shield the positive cable and i did shield going up his nest of wires here so not a lot has changed since the last video but uh yeah we're starting to make some progress oh yeah and i did get all the clutch linkage back in and all all of this stuff is reassembled everything's cleared and ready to go up here so okay yeah and once we clean the grease they hit something here it's not leaking yet but I'm gonna highly recommend that uh, the next time this motor's out, this pan get changed. Okay, we fought the mighty struggle. We, on the other pipe, we trimmed behind the weld. And we putzed and we fought and we putzed. We got that pipe out. We cleaned it up. And... Not only, and then I'm, I am putting new hangers on, that still just happens to be there, so it's helping us line it up. But not only was I able to slip that nicely on the pipe, but look at that, We've, it's already solid. I mean, we will weld or clamp, I haven't decided yet. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. I'm going to check and see what I think about our locations here and for the O2 we're not going to determine them yet but we're going to make sure they're going to work before we commit to this but I think we have a solution that's going to work really well okay we're feeling like that's enough for tonight and you can sell for reusing some three inch exhaust on an F body a convertible even um, I think the ground clearance is really not that bad. This looks pretty good. We haven't done the hangers yet. We'll deal with that after we're done welding. We've got them kind of placed so we know where everything should basically fall out. 
We'll make sure the mufflers are flat and even. But yeah, the S-pipes are definitely the way to go on this one. We did not expect to be able to just uh, reuse the slip fit because I don't own a three inch pipe expander and hadn't really considered buying one. We'll have to polish these tubes pretty good before we do the fish mouth and put those adapters on. Um, the O2 sensor is definitely going here where it's protected by the tail shaft of the tranny. It's a great spot, far enough downstream to get a good mix. Especially with a cam that's so lopy, this way we're not getting a lot of a reversion, so the O2 sensor should be pretty accurate. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the fit that we have here. All this Headman stuff, you know, it's not free, but it definitely fits. You know, we didn't even ding up anything on the headers. I got a little scratch, but we didn't have to put one relief in it. So I'm very, very happy there. But you can see, here, let me get to the front of the car. That unfortunately, and I hate these things, that oil pan's still one of the lowest points of the car. Nothing I can do about that. But the exhaust is much, much tighter than it was when the car was brought to me. And I can probably do very little here because just like every GM vehicle, you know, you got that e-brake issue. So outside of that, I'm very, very happy with the way this looks. So we're gonna call it a night and then tomorrow we'll get some more done. Okay, it's the next day. I've been futzing and futzing and futzing and rehanging and rehanging because we really do want to tuck it a little higher. This is the problem I'm having is tucking this part of the floor for the convertible secondary frame. And then before we tack all that, I figured we'd come in here and I don't have a fancy tubing notcher and I just can't justify the expense. So between a diamond wheel and a grinder, you can start just playing with it, working your way in until you got something tight enough to weld. So these are getting really, really close. So yeah, you can see, cut out a large chunk with the with the cutoff and then just been grinding. So that's how that's gonna work. Okay, I've never claimed to be much of a welder, but we've now got these two pipes stuck together. Some of these actually even look okay. I didn't do those, somebody else did those. But remembering that I'm reclaiming pipe, you're gonna get a contaminated weld a little bit. But it just has to hold it and keep the gas in. So now I'm getting ready to drill some holes so we can put the fish lips on there so we can have the turnouts. Quick tip when welding O2 bungs, always throw a plug in them and that'll keep the threads all nice and clean. Just pop that back out while it's all still hot. Boy, shop dog doesn't even care about welders. So anyway, like they say, a grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't. These are not pretty. It kept blowing through right here in the old pipe. But we got it. So I'm confident those won't leak. Okay, she's hanging. I've got that snugged up and that one snugged up. The important part is you can see the concept now for the turnouts. And I've got them angled back ever so slightly. Those should make a great fun bit of racket when he opens those. But then when he's actually driving without those open, he's going to get better exhaust than he had before. Now, I've still got to do these brackets. I'm going to have to drop the car and do something there. I've got to, and I'm replacing that hanger as well. Also, I've noticed that both of these hangers are loose, so I'm going to have to monkey with those. 
And then at some point we got to figure out what we're going to do about the e-brake because it is a manual car. We may do a tuck under for now. I'm going to see if he's interested in going to the low car kit like I use on the rocket ship. It runs all the cables down one side so you know we'd be able to put a block here or along the side up here. Oh, you can't even see it up in here and then run the cables down up and over and then since he's already got this brakes on the back that should make it less disgusting to do yeah okay here they are yeah he's got them way up there so yeah I think that's not going to be too bad to to sort out there because that means I don't have to pull axles to get all that out to change the cables because they're already outside I can't help but notice that this brake is installed upside down I don't know how somebody did that but there's no way you're ever bleeding that that sucker's full of air what about this side yeah these are upside down well, I'll bring that up too and say, hey, uh, you got your calipers on the wrong side. That can't be good. Unless there's another, oh, there's another Zerk on top. So there can be mounted either way. Okay, never mind. Sometimes you just notice things and you follow them down, kind of like this. This drives me crazy, but it's not on our list. So we'll just deal with it. Okay, I think I've got the exhaust tucked up pretty nice. There's still a lot to do yet. I mean, let's be real, but this is hanging. This is hanging pretty nice. That's clear, hanging pretty nice. You know, definitely clearing everything. New gaskets everywhere. Everybody here feels pretty snug. Those top bolts on there aren't fun, so hopefully I got them. As we all know, not the greatest welder. I'll put the O2 in later. For now, I just snugging and placing and snugging and placing. So that's where we're at right now. All right, before I shut her down, we just fired her up to look for leaks and dings. We got a couple tiny things to move. But you'll notice, I've got seven inches of vacuum sitting there, and we haven't even tuned this yet. So this is already infinitely better than when it was brought to me. So, yeah, it sounds pretty good. So, we're not playing in there. She sounded pretty good. Looks pretty nice under there. We haven't heard or seen any real leaks or anything. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at for now. We're, uh, we're pretty happy. Okay. We took her down. We tightened all the bolts again. And then we put the new spacer in. Because one of the big problems was the spacer that was in it was not flat. So for until the spacer got here, I just had a whole bunch of plates stacked up. So this spacer is garbage. Um, so we got that on. We're fine tuning the uh, idle a little bit. Um, we'll probably pull the timing light out later and really kind of check to make sure we're curved the way we want to be. But for now. Um, we just adjusted the fuel pressure because it was set for three for some reason. So now we've got it at six. So I'm happy with that. The O2 gauge that he has for his air fuel ratio meter, his meter doesn't seem to work right. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to do it the way I've always done things and you just smell it. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it's not too lean, it's not too rich. I think we're already pretty close on that. So, she sounded good. You know, we did recycle. 
recycling the mufflers and the tailpipes. You know, save some money there. And uh, yeah, so so far she seems to be running pretty good. She's quite old. And we figured out what button runs these things. So I'm going to try this. So hopefully. work so it'll make that obnoxious noise that uh, people seem to enjoy in their cars so all right 